Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jamie Harris, and today we'll be discussing a SWOT analysis that I conducted for the job that I've been working for the past five years for the company of Republic Services. During this analysis, we'll talk about the, and cover the following topics. We'll do a quick introduction, overview, and background of the company. We'll visit the vision statement of the company. We'll take a look at the internal SWOT matrix, the external SWOT matrix. We'll visit the gap analysis. We'll talk about some of the ethics of the, the organizational culture, the corporate responsibility and sustainment, and globalization. All right, quick introduction. Public services were originally founded by Mr. Wayne Heisinger back in 1981 in Chicago, Illinois. Originally, Republic Services was known as BFI. It operated as the name BFI and under the name BFI from 1981, its inception date, until about 1996, at which time Allied Waste then purchased the company from BFI. It operated as Allied Waste from 1996 to 2008 which at that time, Republic Services purchased a company and we've been operating for the past 12 years as Republic Services. The company currently has about 36,000 employees and is growing on a daily basis. We currently have 195 landfills across the country and we operate in 41 of the 50 states. Currently, we're the number two municipal solid waste company in the United States with annual earnings of $10 billion plus per year. And our current owner and CEO is Mr. Don Slager. Here's a look at our leadership team. In the middle, we have our CEO, Mr. Don Slager. To the left, we have our chief operating officer, Mr. John Vander Ark. And to the right, we have our president, Mr. Tim Stewart. Now we're gonna take a look at our vision statement. Pretty cut and dry. The public statement is to be America's preferred recycling and waste services partner. All right, now we're going to take a look at some of the internal SWOT analysis or some of our strengths. We have a lot of strengths, however, ones that we highlighted here include our positive community influence. We have a lot of different community influences through different initiatives that we partake in, such as uh, promoting local businesses, um, also conducting and hosting tours for high schools, colleges, and elementary schools, as well as helping out the local parks with their environmental needs. Uh, we also have an initiative of diversity through inclusion, and that's where we're trying to hire a diverse team of leaders to make the employees feel comfortable and to where they can actually sit down and trust them with the things that they have going on in their lives and in their uh, professional lives as well. Uh, we have excellent customer service. We go out of our way to provide excellent customer service to our customers. We have various employee recognition programs such as DTS or Dedicated to Safety. And that's a safety program where employees for being safe accumulate points over time and they can buy nice items for themselves and for, themselves, for their families such as riding lawnmowers, uh, various cooking utensils, televisions, radios, all those types of things, video games. So it's a nice program for the hourly employees to, to partake in. Uh, the mentorship and management programs are great. The public looks inside and they try to grow their talent from within first, but we also actively recruit outside in order to assemble the best team possible. And lastly, we want to talk about our safety program. Public safety program is second to none. We discuss on a monthly basis topics such as OSHA, our focus six, which is the six most deadly accidents and injuries that occur in the company, uh, just to make employees aware and keep them and keep them vigilant and have them remain vigilant about accidents and injuries. All right, some of our weaknesses, market penetration. Currently, Republic Services only operates in 41 out of the 50 states. I think because of that, there's no way we can have a global influence or a global presence. I'm a firm believer that if you're not number one in your own country, you can not have a global effect on others. We also have the inability to affect global change, 
pinned by the fact that we're not number one or we're two in the industry uh, and our higher price point than some of our competitors. All right, some of our internal strengths. Uh, we have a strong community initiatives. I think a way to preserve that strength is to continue to support local businesses and community initiatives. We also have our initiative of diversity through inclusion. I think we need to proceed with recruiting a diverse team of leaders to move the company forward. We have excellent customer service. I think we need to continue to go above and beyond to put a customer in need, uh, a customer in need at ease during his, his or her crucial times. Our employee recognition programs, we need to continue to support the employee network through various reward programs and initiatives such as recognition dinners. Our mentorship and management programs, we need to continue to identify and develop relevant talent to help shape the future of the Republic team. And lastly, our safety programs. We need to continue to put safety at the forefront of all of our operational commitments. Some of our weaknesses, again, market penetration. I think it, a way to correct that is to acquire goods and services in the untapped areas to achieve exposure, a lack of global influence and presence. We need to continue to expand into its and to use social media and partnering initiatives to gain global advantage and consideration through processes and procedures, the inability to affect global change. I think we do that by continuing to push the boundaries of research for possible recycling solutions and initiatives uses for initiatives used at landfills of like landfill gas to energy and other types of waste streams and our higher price point compared to our competitors. I think in order to correct that, we need to work with our accounting to conduct a market analysis to become more comparable to the competitors in the area and increase sales and revenue. Some of our weaknesses and opportunities to get better. Market penetration, potential revenue stream, untapped areas deemed to rule, and whether or not the acquisition is too costly versus the return on investment. All right, market penetration. I think one way to overcome or correct that deficiency is acquiring and establishing goods and services, which will help promote the business in unfamiliar markets. Potentially, great revenue streams. I think by establishing new business, the potential for a new revenue stream is generated, which helps the company grow its brand and achieve targeted growth through product placement. Untapped areas deemed to rule. Establish smaller transfer stations to deliver waste to centralized areas. This will enable drivers to complete routes by co-locating collected waste that can be transported to landfills by transfer trucks. And the acquisition, whether or not it's too costly versus the return on investment. I think we work with our budgeting team to establish a fair but not insulting offer when we're looking to conduct that acquisition. Don't purchase new fleets of equipment when dressing out these new newly acquired areas, but rather we send our refurbished but yet dependable units to these locations so no capital is used to support this, vision, this division for equipment. All right, now we're gonna take a look at our gap analysis. Our gap analysis has the company's vision statement and the value creation. The company's vision statement, again, is simply to be America's preferred recycle and waste, part, uh, waste services partner. Value creation also, value creation, states that they want to deliver consistent earnings and returns. Some of the ways and some of the action plans I think we can actually put to close the gap include to conduct studies and analysis to start and complete the acquisition of goods and services in areas where public services doesn't currently occupy. I think we need to affect change by affecting markets in all 50 states of the United States. We need to establish the right teams for each one of the newly acquired areas to maximize customer service experience and growth in the community. We need to deliver competitive rates. And when dressing out and or equipping these new newly acquired areas, we need to relocate used quality assets to the more rural stations 
which will allow for savings on initial build out and use smaller transfer stations to co-locate waste and tap into unexplored markets. All right, now we're gonna visit the ethics, culture, responsibility, and sustainability. I think overall, the leadership team is firm, they're fair, but they have really high expectations of frontline front leaders such as, and the effect and impact that we have on our employees and the environment. Uh, there's no concerns with the ethical side of the business. Staffing is constantly being evaluated so that we can equip each and every area with the best and brightest to grow the business effectively and efficiently. Uh, training is ongoing throughout the company for various programs as well. However, one thing that has taken a toll is this COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, some restructuring has occurred and I fear that more is gonna continue and more so the corporate office than anywhere. Uh, environmental sustainability, the company actively participates in things such as a stormwater pollution prevention plan or the SWIP, the SPCC, which stands for the Spill Prevention Controls and Countermeasures. The use of uh, recycled water is promoted for dust control on a daily basis, a uh, load inspections and load rejection programs where when customers come in, we actually, uh, unauthorized material is then directed to areas where they can safely dispose of it. Uh, and we also reuse and recycle dirt to cover the waste streams on a daily basis. Also, before any uh, groundwork can be done or any major excavations, an EIR or a environmental impact report has to be done to let us know the effects on the environment. Now we're gonna cover globalization. First off, to achieve, we need to first achieve a company that has a presence in all 50 states. We need to continue to be at the forefront for new uses in, re in reliable, I'm sorry, renewable resources produced by landfill activities. And we need to create differentiation through targeted growth and offer different services that are beneficial on a global level in order to affect social awareness and influence change. So in summary, things we need to make sure that we're doing is we need to continue to provide outstanding customer service to our customers. We need to continue to develop talent from within and recruit new and bright talent to move the needle for the company. We need to continue to support the local communities which, which we serve through initiatives and support programs. We need to continue to celebrate the employees who do the hard work and make the success achievable. We need to remain vigilant on issues regarding safety and continue to put safety at the forefront of every task we take on. We need to achieve market penetration in unfamiliar areas to grow the business. We need to establish small transfer stations to co-locate waste in the more rural areas, which helps profitability. And we need to re reassign refurbished equipment to the smaller, more rural locations to save on the spending capital in smaller markets.